So welcome back to the live session. Chat going on in the background. We've already had a look at Samsung Series 5. We're going to have a look at the Asus Tai Chi 21 here. I've had it for about a week. And um, it's a 11.6 inch, 1.25 kilo Ultrabook with a very shiny lid that's actually a screen. So um, what you've got here, and you might have seen it in videos, is you've got an Ultrabook on the inside and then you close it and the screen changes and you get the tablet on the outside. There you go, there's the tablet on the outside. So 1.25 kilogram tablet, full HD screen, uh, full touch on here, open it up and you've got an Ultrabook, non-touch, full HD screen here and a backlit uh, keyboard. Let me just take you around the uh, device, show you some of the uh, the ports and the sort of layout. It's a really nicely finished device, very high quality indeed. This is a €1,300, a one thousand three hundred dollar device with uh, Core i5 and a 128GB SSD. You've got power, you've got USB uh, super speed, you've got a VGA mini port, and you've got um, uh, volume rocker up and down, and then you've got a screen lock, which prevents the outside screen from coming on if you don't want it. And then on the other side, you've got power, you've got, uh, is that some micro HDMI, and one other super speed USB, so USB 3 and DC in. So because of these, and this is one of the issues you have on all the devices that are convertible, some of the bezel is given over to the essential buttons, power, volume, and screen lock, or rotate lock, so you lose space for ports. Um, and this is a classic example. You've got micro ports here that are trying to you know, fill the gaps uh, in the port uh, capability. So something to be wary of. Um, Overall, really nice finish, as I mentioned. No removable battery on this, no access ports, so you can't do any, uh, or you're not encouraged to do any upgrades here. You've got speaker port here, speaker port here. The speakers on this, Bang & Overson tuned. They're fantastic. They are really, really good. You actually feel some bass from the device. You actually feel the device underneath. You can feel the music coming through it, so there's some, some quite um, low frequency response on the on the speakers, and it's not hi-fi at all. But in terms of laptops, it's very impressive, and uh, that's really nice and comfortable when you've got some background music playing. Uh, on the inside, then you've got this funny sort of bezel. It does look very old-fashioned to me, uh, and in the middle, an 11.6 inch um, uh, full HD screen. Same as on the outside, it's not touch though. And that's one of the issues you have. You go from this sort of touch scenario on the outside, and that's how long it takes to switch, by the way, two seconds. You go from this touch scenario on the outside, and then you're so used to using the touch on the outside that you want to touch on the inside. Now, that, that's kind of funny for the first day or two, but after that, you're touching and touching and touching again, expecting things to happen and thinking, why is it not happening? Why is what? And then you realize, of course, it's not, not, not on a touch screen. So you've lost some time, it gets inefficient, and you get annoyed. And so that really should have been a touch screen on there. But having said that, the bezel, the, the, the thickness here would have been much thicker. We've already got an extra one to two millimeters here because of the, the glass or the hardened plastic covering needed for the touch screen. And it would be, again, another one millimeter if this was a touch screen on the inside as well. So it's a compromise there. And what you can say though is that because it's uh, non-touch they've made it uh, not glossy so it's a matte screen there and uh, so that's quite nice. So the working fascia here is probably pretty optimal as, a, as an Ultrabook certainly as a, as a very highly mobile Ultrabook. Backlit keyboard, really 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 nice keyboard. Mouse, uh, not as good as the Samsung, it's got built-in uh, mouse um, clicks, mouse buttons um, which I don't like, I, I like, prefer them separated, but it's pretty good, it's not too bad at all. Um, one special button you've got here then is the uh, screen switch button, and if I just uh, quickly log in here, you, I can demo that, we're just going to um, just going to log in. That allows you to, s to choose between internal screen only, uh, external, um, mirror, or dual, sorry, extended screen display. Let me just, uh, let me just log in. Okay, there we go. So when, when you press that button, you get to this page, and then at the top, you'll see you can choose the mode. So if you choose that mode, you'll have an extended desktop. So you can basically have stuff running here, and then you've got your, you know, Windows, uh, 
running on the outside in a touch environment. So you can do PowerPoint uh, running the uh, PowerPoint and notes on this side and then the presentation on this side. 11.6 inch screen is not really ideal for presentations though and I am tending to have more fun just displaying uh, images on the back like that. <laughs> That's one thing you can do. Uh, right, so that is the sort of special uh, screen feature. Let's just go back to single screen there. It automatically goes to outside screen when you close it unless you've got the screen lock button on in which case it will shut down or go into standby. Um, so a couple of things to mention about this. Fast SSD, nice Core i5 system, pretty uh, pretty impressive for what basically looks like a very small netbook um, but it's only got a 34 watt hour battery inside. So I, I mentioned earlier the rule of thumb to find out battery life on an Ultrabook in 2012-2013. Divide the battery capacity by 10, uh, and in this case 3.5 hours is exactly what you get in a sort of Wi-Fi web working scenario on the desk with a medium screen brightness. That is a little bit um, counter, um, yeah, <laughs> counterproductive. Well, let's consider this device to be a mobile device, something you really want to take out with you but of course when you're taking it out you want more battery life not less so you're paying here the extra one and a half millimeters and the hundred euros that's been put on the outside has been taken away from the inside to keep the uh, device uh, thin and it really is thin so well you, ha you have to consider that I think um, this as a convertible is better than the Dell XPS uh, 12 in t for tablet usage. It's better than the Yoga 13 for tablet usage. And there's a really noticeable difference in the weight of it and in the sort of handling of it. Because it's much smaller, there's not the big lever effect on your wrist. And because of the 1.25 kilo weight, it's much more usable. But it's certainly not in the territory of, um, you know, a an 800 gram 11.6-inch uh, tablet, and I've got one here, which is uh, again a, a Windows uh, tablet. This is 11.6-inch uh, Lenovo uh, Lynx. It's on a Clover Trail platform. It's eight, uh, uh, seven or eight hundred grams, and this is really, really nice for reading. 10-inch versions of this are even more ha um, handle, uh, hand handleable, handleable, handlebar, huh? <laughs> easy to hold, and uh, so you've got bear that in mind. It might be that you could, if you want touch, buy the Samsung Series 5 Ultra Touch and then with the 300 euro extra go and buy yourself an extra 7. Hmm. That's something to, to think about. Uh, webcams, actually nice quality webcams on this. Uh, the 5 megapixel outside camera gave some good results when I tested it and, uh, and I mentioned the speakers as well. So overall Tai Chi 21 is expensive but it's a very high quality device. As a convertible the tablet is more usable than the Dell XPS 12 and the Lenovo 13 or anything that's uh, 1.5 kilograms. Um, you do have the issue that there's no touch on the inside and the real possible killer is the battery life of three and a half hours. So, Asus Tai Chi 21, thanks for uh, watching that. We're doing a live session here, so it's a bit uh, crazy at the moment. We've got a chat session going on in the background. UMPCPortal.com slash live is where we do these uh, chat sessions. And, of course, UMPCPortal.com is where I write about Ultrabooks. You can go out to, to that and check that out, where we've got reviews of a lot of the devices. And we will be doing more reviews for the devices you see here. In the next video, we've got the Dex Dell XPS. Uh, no, we've got the Dell. Ah, we've got this monster the Inspiron 15Z, 15 15-inch 15 uh, touch ultrabook uh, with DVD drive and an NVIDIA GT 630M inside. So we're going to be doing some, um, maybe some gaming tests on it a bit later. Thanks for watching the YouTube video. Don't forget to like, don't forget to check out the other uh, videos in the channel. My name's Chippy and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.